Um, so I'm Renee Tumalo. I'm a social worker and a certified uh, professional and personal development coach. Um, and then do you want to yeah. introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Peter Tumalo. I'm Renee's husband and I uh, am a licensed professional therapist in Chandler, Arizona and owner of growth counseling, uh, specializing in trauma and working with adults and families. So um, I've heard a lot of people say, and it's been the same with the clients that I've coached this week, that there's a lot of stress um, during the holidays. There's more going on than we can keep up with. So uh, we would like to start with the mindfulness exercise to just bring us into the present. Um, don't fall asleep. <laughs> I hear a lot of people saying they're very tired. We'll make it short just to, just to get in the moment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So... Um... And yeah, I do encourage you guys to kind of follow along. I know it's been a long day. It's been a long day for us too. We're tired. Um, but let's just take a moment to, you know, I invite you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing that. And just start by taking a few slow, deep breaths in. And out. And maybe just take a moment to Put all of the stressors from the day, anything that's on your to-do list or shopping list, just imagine putting those away for now into a container. Anything that's on your mind from the past, the present, or the future, just imagine it going into a container. Closing the lid and just putting that away in a safe, secure place for now. Knowing that we'll come back to that when we need to. And just begin to let anything that feels tense in your body start to soften a little bit. Maybe noticing the sounds around you. Noticing where your body makes contact with your chair or couch. Just bringing all your attention into the present moment. And when you're ready, you can bring your attention back to the room. And if your eyes are closed, go ahead and allow them to open. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with just the differences between stress and anxiety. Stress is usually triggered by something external. So this might be a due date for a project, um, a due date, you know, a test that's coming up, um, maybe having a sick family member, um, or, you know, having trouble with our significant other, anything that's external that could trigger uh, that stress. <clears throat> stress can be short term or long term, depending on the external factor and how long that that external stimulus is in place. But it's typically stress is relieved when the source is removed. And then 100% of humans experience stress in their lifetime. Um, definitely during the holiday season, right? Mm -hmm. So with anxiety, um, anxiety is persistent and excessive worry. <clears throat> and it doesn't end even after the external stimulus has been removed. We still feel um, a pressure and an anxiousness, even if a stimulus has been removed. And then 31% of Americans will be diagnosed with an anxiety disorder during their lifetime. Uh, anxiety, there are a lot of different anxiety disorders, agoraphobia, um, is, a, is a fear of being in open spaces. That might be where someone um, doesn't want to leave their home. Um, you have social anxiety disorders, um, panic disorder. And anxiety that's that where you've been diagnosed with something really needs professional help. So one of the things that Pete and I want to stress as we're doing this presentation is just that we're going to be talking about stress and low-level anxiety. We're not going to go into how you would treat um, you know, anxiety uh, disorder that's been diagnosed. Um, so just want to clarify that. 
Okay. You want to talk about the similarities? Sure. <clears throat> um, so both stress and anxiety are emotional responses, um, and they have similar symptoms. They can result in uh, difficulty sleeping, difficulty focusing, um, frustration and irritability, fatigue, muscle tension, stomach issues. Uh, mild anxiety and mild stress respond similarly to uh, coping skills. So if your stress or mild anxiety does not respond to coping techniques, it's important to reach out to a mental health professional. This would be kind of a sign that there might be something more going on. And we definitely encourage anyone who's been diagnosed or feels like their anxiety is more in the moderate to severe range to, to reach out for help. Yeah, and I just, I want to tell a, a quick personal story around this. Um, <clears throat> I had a kind of a bug phobia come up when I was really young. I was showing fears, uh, a fear around bugs, and I was able to manage it most of my life. But then as I got older, that fear got worse. And it got to the point where it was really limiting my life. Um, I was not doing the things that I really enjoyed doing before, like camping. Um, I was having panic attacks if I saw a certain bug in a certain situation. Um, and so that was, I, I knew at that point that I was not responding to any type of coping mechanisms that I had learned in my life. And so I knew that I needed to go see someone professionally. And I did. I went to a therapist. I, I did desensitization therapy where they slowly um, introduce you to your fear um, from like, you know, the smallest little harmless bug to something that re really is scary. Um, and slowly I overcame that phobia. <laughs> and now I'm the one who does the scorpion hunting. So <laughs> I just want to say that if you are struggling with, you know, uh, severe anxiety or some kind of phobia, there is hope and there's help out there. Um, and I am, I am living proof of that. And I can attest to that <laughs> with her through that entire journey. He doesn't have to kill all the bugs for me anymore. Not anymore. Okay, so now we're going to move into just a little bit of the science of stress because it's it's important that we that we understand how stress works in our bodies and how we think about it. Um, I I want to point out that. These next few bullet points are from a TED talk that I highly recommend. It's by um, Kelly McGonigal. It's M-C-G-O-N-I-G-A-L, McGonigal. Um, it's a great TED talk. I highly recommend you listen to it. You know, those TED talks are short, so it won't take much time. But what I did was I summarized her main points. Um, <clears throat> so in her TED talk, she talks about a study done by researchers at the University of Wisconsin, and it was with 30,000 um, participants, and it was done over a period of eight years. And they found that participants with a lot of stress had a 43% increased risk of dying, which sounds really scary because we've all had periods in our lives where we have a lot of stress. But what she points out is that's only if they believed that stress was harmful. So that increased risk was based on how they looked at the stress in their lives and what they believed about stress. Then she introduces a study completed by Harvard, which measured the effects of stress on participants' blood vessels. And they found that if the subject believed stress was a helpful reaction to threats or whatever situation they were in, then their blood vessels actually relaxed versus constricted. So again, another study that's telling us how we think about this really matters. She goes on to talk about oxytocin. Um, and this is something that's naturally released in our bodies when we are stressed and it serves actually as an anti-inflammatory. Um, and that helps our blood vessels remain relaxed and oxytocin also compels us to seek support and connect with others. And that support actually also helps, you know, decrease our stress and decrease the inflammation in our body. So it's really cool. I think that we have this natural reaction to stress where our body is, is actually releasing um, this hormone that's very helpful for us. And then the last study that she cites is from the University of Buffalo. And it found that every major stressful event increases an adult's likelihood of death by 30%. Again, scary, right? We've all had major stressful events and we'll probably have more the longer we live. 
Um, but that was only if um, they didn't spend any significant time helping others. So if we spend significant time reaching out, connecting, helping others, it increased uh, the increased risk is actually zero. So it nullifies the increased risk of, of death. Okay, so what do these studies teach us? Um, our body stress response is designed to release a hormone um, for stress resilience, which is oxytocin. Um, and this, as Renee said, requires uh, or helps us seek support. Um, we're healthier when we view stress as helpful, uh, as a helpful response. So the next time you feel stressed, take a moment to say to yourself, my body is preparing me for a challenge. And I'm thankful for that. My body is getting me energized. My racing heart is preparing me to act. I'm breathing faster, which makes me uncomfortable, but it means that there's more oxygen getting in my brain, which is a good thing. Seeking support and helping others boosts our stress resilience. And you know, there's a common, uh, saying, maybe you've heard it before, physiologically in our body, uh, the difference between anxiety and excitement are very, very similar. Um, and the, really the only difference, I mean, our heart races, our stomach might go into knots, right? we, we might have muscle tension. The only difference is how we think about that situation. You know, Renee and I, as we prepare, uh, prepare for these, we, we feel a little nervous. But we know we can get through it. We know we support each other. We know this is good for you guys in your community and, and potentially beneficial for people. So that stress kind of excites us rather than, you know, cripples us. So keeping in mind, like, my body is preparing me for a challenge. Can I shift my thinking from this is so overwhelming to my, my physical response to my body is actually doing something to help me get through this thing? And, and if I can get through it, then you know, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, studies show actually not much, right? So just shifting our, our thinking about that can be really important. Yeah, we, we had an example recently with our son who was very nervous about a basketball game that he was in. He got to play at the son's arena and he was very nervous and he kept talking about how stressed and anxious he was. And so we had a conversation with him about well, how about we turn that around and we talk, we start talking about how excited you are and how, what an, what an amazing, exciting opportunity this is, because that feeling inside of you is just the same as excitement. And so, um, that helped to bring, bring down, uh, some of what he was identifying as, as stress. Okay. So let's move into some just practical ways of, of managing stress or low level anxiety. Pay attention to your breath. So this is one of the reasons why we started with the mindfulness exercise. And we start with it with almost all of our presentations because it really is the fastest way to regulate our mind and, and our body. Um, so first thing we wanna breathe into our belly. And so that means when you're breathing, your belly should be extending, it should be coming out. And so when I'm doing breath work, I'll put my hand on my stomach and I will breathe and make sure that it's actually pressing into my hand that I'm breathing correctly. Um, make your exhale longer than your inhale. This helps stop the production of cortisol and cortisol is a stress hormone and it helps stop the production of adrenaline, which triggers our fight flight survival system. Um, so if we can, if we can take shorter breaths in and exhale longer, we're gonna help stop that, the production of those hormones that in, increase that feeling of stress, and then it helps produ um, produce serotonin. Um, so one of the things that um, I've recently learned was this two sniffs in and a long exhale. Um, so through your nose, you do two sniffs, and then, so you're doing a much longer exhale than you are the inhale. Um, putting your hand where you're feeling any stress or anxiety and breathing into that area, that's, that's a really good mindfulness technique. So some of us feel our stress in our shoulders. Sometimes it's in our heads, um, you know, maybe your forehead or your chest. Um, so putting your hand where you're actually feeling it is getting you in touch with your body um, and keeping you present. Allow longer gaps between breathing in and out. So this is a, a breathing technique where when you breathe in, you hold it 
<clears throat> for four seconds and then you breathe out and you hold for four seconds before you breathe back in. Um, and then paired muscle relaxation, that's just tensing a muscle while you're breathing in and then when you breathe out, letting it go. This is something I do with my kids at night. If they're having fears or anxiety, we will pick certain muscles and I'll say, you know, um, okay, you know, ball up your, your hand in a fist when you're breathing in. And then when you breathe out, let your hand relax. And we'll do just different muscle groups and that really helps their body uh, calm down and their central nervous system come back online. Okay. All right. So soothe with your senses. Um, I do this exercise a lot with my clients and, and my kiddos as well. Um, <clears throat> we did a little bit in the mindfulness, although I had you close your eyes. So, but a lot of times I'll have clients, you know, look around the room, um, notice what you're seeing, um, and you know, notice what you're hearing using your five senses. Um, our minds can be anywhere. They could be on all the Christmas shopping we haven't done yet, and they can be on you know, mistakes we've made in the past causing stress, our body is always right here in the present moment. Um, and usually what's happening in the present moment is not as stressful as what's happening in our mind as we're projecting into the future, ruminating about the past. So um, using your senses to really ground you um, so you can, you know, with hearing play music, play nature sounds um, or a meditation, listening to relaxing music. Renee and I always have kind of chill music going on in our house all the time just to bring all the energy down. Unless um, we're doing chores. And that's right. And then we're picking energy. it up. That's true. That's true. Um, so <laughs> smells light a candle we have a diffuser in our house lavender spray my son loves that it, it helps calm him down um taste right we have a cup of tea right here um smoothie eat something that reminds you of, of something peaceful or a joyful time and then touch you know um, we have lots of soft cuddly blankets all over our house so we can cuddle up our kids can cuddle up take a warm bath a shower um, you know, pet an animal if you have one, cuddle up with your dog or cat, um, use lotion, ask for hugs and snuggles from your kiddos. All of this can help really reduce our stress and anxiety. There's something called the, is it the five senses? Five, five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. And it's to use with your senses. And so you, to, to get, to get present and be mindful you, you th um, look for th five things you can see, um, four things you can hear, three things you can touch, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. And so that's a, a really good little system to use to get in touch with your senses and in, in your body in the present moment. Okay, <clears throat> the accepts technique. Um, for those of you who like acronyms, we have quite a few of them here. So um, doing an activity, you know, playing a game, listening, listening to music, getting some movement in, whether that's a few jumping jacks or taking a walk. Um, contributing, so like we said in that study, helping others and, and, and focusing on others is really helpful and, and helps decrease that risk that comes with stress. So helping someone volunteer, sending a, you know, a text to a friend to, to encourage them. Um, compare. Think of a time when you weren't so stressed, just to remind yourself that this too will pass, or a time when you were stressed and how you eventually felt better. So no, no feeling is permanent. Um, this is something we talk a lot about, that every feeling we have, every emotion is temporary. Um, so this is a good exercise to remind ourselves of that. Um, emotions. Watch a funny show. Have a go-to that you can that you can watch to kind of bring the bring the stress down and and switch your emotions, even if it's just for you know thirty minutes. Um, push away. I don't I don't love this, but that's the acronym. Push away. I, I don't want you to think that it's push down. I don't. We're not pushing down our emotions or our feelings. This is just a walk away from the stressful situation if you can. If you are stuck on a problem at work. 
or uh, you are overwhelmed with something that you're facing in the moment and you can watch a, a walk away from it and give yourself that physical and mental break, that's, that's really healthy. Um, thoughts. Think of something you're grateful for. Um, I know a lot of people keep a, a gratitude journal or, or even saying an affirmation out loud. And then sensations. Um, so doing anything that's cold. So I know a lot of people are into this, the cold plunging right now. Not me, but I, I hear people are doing this. Um, or even just holding ice in your hand. Um, what that does is it helps lower your blood pressure. And so that can, that can help bring that feeling of stress, that racing heart, the sweating, um, that can help eliminate that. Okay. Another acronym. <laughs> you guys should print these out, put them on your fridge. <laughs> I think we should do that. Um, so use the improved technique. So imagery, imagine a calm and safe place, um, remembering a more peaceful time. So I really encourage everyone to do that. And I'm an EMDR therapist and in EMDR, we, we use a calm, safe place as a, as a home base to always re return back to during stressful times. So really getting an imagery in, in your mind, um, a place that you've been to before or imagine going and, and doing those, um, you know, using the senses to really heighten that experience can be really helpful. Um, meaning, consider meaning and purpose that has come from painful situations. Um, prayer and meditation. Um, there's lots of meditation apps um, and, and even some that are Christian based as well. Um, we use a lot in our home with our kids. Um, Renee and I use the Calm app um, almost on a daily basis, and it really can be helpful to just take 10 minutes to be mindful. Um, a lot of them are guided as well. So relax, learn, get a massage, take deep breaths, take a nap. You know, we talked about movies, cuddling up, just take time to just veg out. Um, one thing at a time, stay present. Um, that container technique that I did in the beginning can be really helpful, right? If I'm working, but I have a million other things swirling around my mind, I'm just imagining putting all that away and I know it's gonna be there when I'm done with work, but right now this is all I'm focusing on. And, and that can be really helpful to just stay present and stay you know, focused on one thing at a time. So V is for vacation, which I love. Give yourself a vacation or just a small break physically and or mentally. That doesn't mean necessarily planning a huge trip, but just taking a small break. Uh, and encouragement, say to yourself, no feeling is forever. I'm doing the best I can. And you know, speak nicely to yourself always encourage that. Sorry. That's okay. I'm no, I'm done. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> I got click happy. Yeah. Okay. And then some, just some additional stress management techniques that are not acronyms, <laughs> <laughs> um, but do, you know, they, some of these may be repetitive to some of the things that we've ever, that we've already mentioned, but I just want to go over these. Um, movement is really important. Movement is, uh, it helps us move stress through and out our body. And we want to do that. We want the stress to move out of our body so we can decrease the inflammation that's in our body. Um, touch, uh, you know, if, if a hug is appropriate, um, that's going to release oxytocin. That's, that's really helpful. Um, support and connection, as we talked about before that in that study, um, having support and connection is going to decrease not only our stress, but our, the risk factors that come with stress. Um, helping others, again, back to that study, anything that you can do in nature um, is going to help regulate your central nervous system. Nature just has a way of, of regulating our central nervous system. I have some uh, moms that I get together with often at, a, at the park with our kiddos. And we've been talking about how like, we should just take our shoes off and like feel the grass under our feet, you know, and it, it has a grounding effect. Um, Give your anxious or stressed part a name so you can unblend and befriend that part of you. Um, <clears throat> when we give our anxious part or any part of us a name, it helps remind us that it is a part of us, but it's not who we are. Our anxiety or our stress is not who we are. It's just a part of us that shows up sometimes. And so um, we don't want to overly identify with that, we want to just recognize that we have a stressed part or an anxious part. Um, so giving it a name can help us remember that. 
Um, and then moving your eyes side to side, and this can, you naturally move your eyes side to side when you're walking, but I'd like for Pete, since he's an EMDR therapist and that's literally what they do, um, I'd like for him to talk about why moving your eyes side to side is helpful. Yeah. So any, and it's not just your eyes, so any bilateral movement, um, you know, you can, you can tap back and forth going for a walk, you know, you kind of just see the bilateral movement in walking, jogging, running. Um, when babies are stressed, what's our natural instinct as, as moms to do, right? Or dads to do, pick up and rock. Um, so there's just something very soothing in this bilateral movement. When we dream, REM sleep, REM stands for rapid eye movement. Our eyes are actually moving back and forth in our, in our dreams, um, which is generating the images we see in our dreams and, and also helping us process the day's events. And, and that's really what dreams are about. It's our, our brain's way of processing our, our past and our stressors and our day's events. That's why people who've had a lot of trauma in their life tend to have a lot of nightmares because they're, they're reliving. So anything that you're doing back and forth, side to side, especially mindfully, um, you know, and being aware of your breath, where you feel stressed out. I mean, if we're kind of taking all this together, um, could be really helpful, you know, noticing your body, noticing where you feel it in stress, going for a walk and be very mindful of your bilateral movement. Um, and just in nature would be great to be able to do that. So all of that can help just help re-regulate your system a little bit more. Um, I'm going to finish up the rest of them. Or, yeah. okay. uh, <laughs> so spend time with someone who is regulated, um, right? If we're stressed and we're with someone who's calm or supportive or empathetic, that, that tends to lower our stress response as well. Um, it's something called mirror neurons. Our, our brain and our body and our system tends to very um, unconsciously begin to mimic the state of others, which is why when you know our kids are dysregulated, sometimes we get dysregulated, right? And vice versa. Um, mindfulness, meditation, prayer, yoga, we've, we've talked a lot about that. Um, and then reading and writing, if if that's something that brings you joy. I do not like writing, but she does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was actually something I wanted to mention, er, mention earlier. I'm glad you mentioned that. That some of these things may not be, yeah. you know, your thing. And, and that's okay. Not not all of these things are what will bring you, you know, that that feeling of calm or, or peace. Um, so these, we're trying to give you as many options as possible so that you can choose, you know, you have a lot of tools now in your tool be belt and you can choose which ones really work well for me. Um, we don't all have to have the same coping mechanisms. Okay, so I would like, if anyone is willing to share, just based on what we've gone over, um, what technique will you practice this holiday season to help manage your stress? Or maybe what technique are you already practicing? If someone was willing to come off mute or put something in the chat, I take the breaks and do something like watch a show that's funny um, that I know that it's funny. I've watched it before a hundred times, but I'll just take a break and just chill out with some Netflix for a little while. Nice. But I really like the idea of like visualizing a peaceful place because for me, like when you said that, that instantly brought to mind sitting in the mountains, hearing the water of the river rushing and mm -hmm. uh, listening to the birds and, um, all those things that I love about being in Montana specifically. So yeah. um, I think I'll start using that one as well. Good. Oh, that's great. Quick, helpful hint. As you're doing that, you're really bringing up that imagery. Do some bilateral taps on your legs to just really tap that in, as we call it. And, and that okay. really enhances the, the calming effect. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. I will. That's great. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Sarah. Yeah. Is there anyone else? And I can't see the comments. So if there's anything, Sarah, that you see in the comments, would you let us know? Oh, I see the chat now. I don't know how that. Okay. So Robert says daily practice of sending kind messages is something I always do. Oh, I love that. That's great. Also being of service to other. That's great. So you're, you're nullifying that increased risk. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Everyone's going to start volunteering now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, do we have any 
questions or comments, that's the end of our presentation. <clears throat>